Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, we have another pistol video for you here today, and this is actually a brand new pistol. We're going to be taking a look at the Stance 9mm Micro Compact made by Savage Arms. It seems like every time you turn around, we've got a new entry to the concealed carry handgun market. Now, with regard to Savage Arms, it's more interesting because this is the first semi-auto pistol they've produced in over 90 years. So the question is, after all this time, have they produced a dependable and reliable carry firearm, or is it just another cheaper entry? We're going to find out in just a minute. All right, once again, thanks for joining us today. If you're new to the channel, or if you've been watching our videos and you haven't had a chance to do so, and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can find that little button in the lower right-hand corner and subscribe that way. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and you can hit the subscribe button. It's a very simple thing to do. It helps us out a whole lot, and we really, really appreciate it. So, the stance by Savage Arms. This is interesting because Savage Arms as a company has been around for a long time. Um, they were founded in 1894, I believe. And um, they've produced a lot of rifles and other weapons over the years. But it's been over 90 years since they produced a semi-auto handgun. So there's a lot of people curious about what we're getting with the stance and um, whether it's worth all that time coming. So let's start off the way we always do. We're going to do a little size comparison here and um, there's a couple different guns that I have handy that are very close um, I'm just going to use the 43x here the Glock um, the shield is very similar in size to my little shield 9 millimeter um, and actually the look really favors the shield a lot in my opinion but that's another reason I wanted to use kind of a different looking but same size gun um, you know you can see that the length Length is very similar between these. Um, the trigger guards are both pretty good size. When you take them and look over the top, you can see that the length is very, very close. And um, they even have a similar sight picture, a little bit different on the 43X. And the length, if you look from the back, you can see that the length is pretty close so if you're used to carrying something like the 43x you know something like the um, savage stance it's so close in size and once again when i do these comparisons it's more about the approximate size and weight it's about feel on the holster because after all these are carry guns that we're talking about so if you're used to carrying something like the little shield or that glock 43x this should be pretty comfortable too We're going to get right into the features of this firearm, but before we do, we want to take a moment to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing us this beautiful example of this Stance Micro Compact 9mm by Savage Arms. Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we cannot thank them enough. So, let's jump right in here and take a look. Kind of in no particular order, uh, when I look at these, a lot of times I kind of find myself going from the top down, so we'll just start right there. So looking at the slide, you can see right away, you've got these cuts in the slide and um, these aggressive textures here. You know, you can really get a grip on that slide, even with gloves on. So they've really made this pretty aggressive here. And uh, the, the texturing on the grip is really aggressive as well. I'll get that more in just one second. But so you've got your sight picture here. Um, these aren't night sights, but it is a, a painted orange kind of high visibility sight. Then you have your white dots in the rear. They call that a, a U notch, and um, that is basically you can see the shape there. But you got two white dots and a uh, an orange dot, and it actually is pretty easy to pick up. So it's not a bad sight setup. Um, like I say, in ideal conditions, I like to have either fiber optic or a tritium but I don't have to I think this is pretty good you know just as far as standard sights it's much better than when you just get a black unpainted sight that's for sure so you've got your 
slide release here and if you look it is ambidextrous you'll see you have that on the other side as well so lefties they were thinking about you too same goes for your safety this gun does have a manual safety that you see you just bring it up with your thumb you go to the other side here you can see that there it is so lefty or righty yeah if this gun is made for you um, as far as your um, disassembly so for takedown and your maintenance before we do that let me just do a quick safety check for you here and show you that we are of course empty and let me lock the slide back. You can take a look in there and you can see that we have nothing going on there. So with the slide locked back, all you have to do, and this is a pretty common setup for a lot of firearms. You see this rounded little notch right here. Well, when you have the slide locked back, that is over the takedown lever, which then all you have to do is just rotate that straight down. And once you do that, you can release your slide lock there and the whole works just comes right off okay and from here obviously if you've taken any firearm apart you can probably figure out from there your spring and your rod assembly and those other common components and then of course you just rotate that back up to have it back together so it's not a bad uh takedown procedure at all it's pretty easy so if you want to do your basic cleaning you know keep things running well um, it comes apart pretty easy so you see the texturing here it starts right up here behind the trigger guard it goes all the way down and around and uh, you may have noticed on the other side you've got a little bit up here on the frame as well um, a little bit higher on the frame so depending on how you hold your firearm like personally as a righty um, I'm never gonna have any need for that you know, I suppose maybe if you were, you know, a lefty and your thumbs ended up on this side, that might be of some use. But for me, it's just strictly cosmetic. I'll, I don't think I'll ever use that for anything. Um, you get your trigger. You can see you've got a little trigger stop here on the rear. So it only goes to a certain extent. Uh, you've got your magazine release right here. And that is also ambidextrous. So there are three controls on this firearm that are all ambidextrous. Let's talk about the magazines for just a second. So the one that I've shown you to start with, this is the, you can see it's an eight round and it has a little small extension on it. Now with the eight round magazine in the firearm, I've got pretty good size hands and my three fingers fit very nicely around the firearm and I don't really feel like I'm having to work to make that happen and there's not a lot of smaller guns like this that I can do that with so that's pretty nice but as a bonus they also give you a seven round magazine which you know has a flush base plate there now of course if you're carrying this concealed sometimes every little bit as you know makes a difference because when you have this in the holster this is generally the part of the firearm that gives you the most problem you know what's sticking up out of the holster so this will save you a little bit of space and it only costs you around and the good part is is if you look you'll see that the grip the front here you've got that little bumps so you've got these little finger grooves so it's got a really nice two finger grip now a lot of guns that have a two finger grip i don't like if they don't have a, a proper place to divide your fingers to really get them in there tight but um, they've done a really good job and when i say this is aggressive texturing i'm not kidding this is really really pronounced so there's no way that you're going to lose your grip on this i can't see how you would um, it's really really good texturing deep so also if you notice on the back here you've got that same aggressive texturing on the back and they do give you another um, back strap I've got the larger one on here now but you can change it out for that smaller one if that is what makes you happy along with that they also give you as a bonus here a set of earplugs so they're all about safety and of course they give you a lock so you can secure your firearm when not in use if you uh, don't have any other means like a, a good gun safe or something like that so looking it over 
Um, we'll talk more about the trigger specifics as far as performance in the range section, but um, the trigger is actually not bad. I'm going to touch on that a lot more here in just a minute. But um, overall, for an MSR PF479, um, you've got three different ambidextrous controls. You've got good texturing. You've got a good size um, trigger guard, good visibility sights, and pretty easy takedown procedure. All right, so let's talk about performance at the range. So I always go into every range day with a uh, with high hopes and um, pretty fair expectations across the board because, you know, if it's a gun you never shot before, you don't know what to expect exactly. But do a quick safety check for you here. Let's just see that this is empty before we get started. So I was talking about the trigger. Um, now, there's a couple different things that, to me, are, are concerns I look for in a trigger just as far as a uh, mark of quality. When you engage the trigger on this gun, you don't really have a lot of take up before the trigger engages, which I actually like. When you pull the trigger and you set in, it's just there's just a slight moment before you're got the pressure coming in and then it's a pretty clean break now the reset is a little long you can see that do that for you again okay that's a pretty long reset now that in itself is not a horrible thing it's just something you need to know there's a lot of firearms that have really short trigger resets and of course that allows you to Fire, uh, if you know how to manipulate that, it can help you fire in rapid succession, um, help you with your, you know, shooting skills. But um, I think if you're just shooting the firearm normally and, uh, you know, concentrating on your shots, being careful, not just shooting rounds as fast as you can possibly get them out of the firearm, I doubt very seriously that that long reset is going to make that big of a difference to the average person but it is something to know especially if that's of concern to you so of course we uh have our test ammo i tried to keep it consistent so i got a little bit of everything here um the s &B, this is of course 115 grain um full metal jacket I also has some of the 115 grain uh, pmc no problem with either one of those. As far as defensive rounds, I had a little bit of everything here. Um, I still have a lot of this Barnes, um, the TAC XPD left over. Um, I bought a whole bunch of this stuff, and uh, I'm glad I did because it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good ammo. Of course, I don't shoot anything that doesn't get some of this V Crown 115 grain uh, SIG ammo through it. This just seems to work really well in every firearm I have that's 9mm. And, of course, some of the Hornady Critical Duty. This is 135 grain. So, didn't have any problems with any of those ammo types. And the sighting picture I was talking about in the beginning, you know, it's not the fanciest thing in the world, but two white dots and a red, you know, front sight is pretty high visibility. And, you know, like any small firearms, you have a good grip, a good stable grip on the handgun and take your time uh, this firearm is just as accurate as any other little small firearm it shoots just as good as a glock it shoots just as good as a little sig it shoots just as good as my shield does now i noticed that when i'm shooting this firearm this texturing you're definitely going to know that you've got that aggressive texturing in your hand um, i'm not sure if i like it as much as i do some of the others because it doesn't take very much doesn't take uh, too many magazines shooting in this uh, texture to where you know you've done something with this firearm you know by comparison you know looking at something like our glock here Let's show you we're clear real quick you know this is a pretty very very mild by comparison but it's still a very positive grip on the firearm i've never once had a glock in my hand and felt like that i didn't have a good control grip of the weapon but um, they have gone 
through great lengths to make this a very highly aggressive texture. So it's just something to know because if you shed a bunch of rounds through it, you're going to know it because you're going to start to feel it. But as far as performance, it actually did very well. There's actually some people at the range whenever this gun came out that gave a snicker because, you know, they'd never heard of it. And obviously the jokes always begin. But, you know, what I told them, well, the joke's on you. It's MSRP of 479 and it shoots great and it likes all ammo. So as far as that goes, there's nothing really bad to mention at the range because it performed very well. All right, so what's it like to carry the Savage Stance as a concealed carry firearm? Well, as predicted, um, to me this feels no different than carrying a shield or a 43X. Um, they're very similar in size and weight. And obviously it's going to make a big difference on what kind of holster that you use. Now, this, whole, this firearm is a little bit bigger than... Um, it's, it says it's a micro compact, but to me, this is larger than something I'll pocket carry. And I do like to pocket carry guns whenever I can. Um, you know, small five shot revolvers, um, tiny stuff like a, you know, an original SIG P365. You know, I can put something like that in a DeSantis gun hide or in a sticky holster and put it down in my pocket. Um, I only use those small holsters like that, things like the sticky, just for small pocket type gun situations. Uh, but they're good for that kind of thing. Um, now, as far as in the waistband, um, it's a brand new weapon, so I didn't have a brand new holster to go with it. But I did have um, a Galco leather holster that's actually for one of my shields. It's just a soft leather holster. And it fit right in there because they're roughly the, I mean, it's shocking how close they are to the size. Now, I'm sure if it was a Kydex holster, it wouldn't work because there's a lot of other differences, and little minor nuances and dimensions that just wouldn't work. But if you got a, a leather holster that's close to the same size, it worked fine for me. And once again, the weight, um, the weight's very similar to the shield or to the Glock. And... Um, and I have no trouble carrying those guns whatsoever. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you are using it in a holster that doesn't cover the, uh, the whole grip, this texturing, you're going to know about it after a little while because you can feel that up against the body. So if you're going to carry this inside the waistband, I'd recommend you do it with something like a, you know, an alien gear, like a cloak tuck or a crossbreed super tuck, you know, where you have the leather piece that comes up and it, you know, guards your body from the grip. I think if you do that, it'll be a lot more comfortable. But um, the weight and size of the firearm very easily kind of blends into your your uh, outfit and um, you know I usually wear when I'm carrying inside the waistband I normally have a t-shirt then an outer shirt and um, it's a very low profile you know a single stack weapon and um, I have no problems whatsoever carrying this concealed. Overall impressions of the Savage Stance. Well let me say this you know a lot of times when I look at some of these less expensive firearms or if it's something new or if it's not as popular or well known, you've always got people who want to make cracks about it. And this one's no different. You know, I, I had people at the range that were, you know, questioning that, joking about it, you know, as far as from a quality standpoint. And I said, well, you know, it's not like you have a lot of savage offerings to compare it to since this is the first one that they've had in over 90 years. Um, but as far as how it performs and functions, you know, we're talking about a firearm that has three different ambidextrous controls on it, you know, standard. Um, it has very aggressive slide serrations. It's easy to manipulate. It's got a simple takedown procedure. Um, it's got a good size trigger guard. They give you two magazines, a flush seven and an extension for the eight. They give you an extra back strap if you want to, you know, change the way the grip feels a little bit. You know, for an MSRP of 479, it's not a bad little firearm. And it actually performs very well. It's not picky with ammo. And, um, you know, so far in every way it's been reliable. So if someone, you know, has an issue with it, well, really the joke's on them because so far so good. Now, of course, this is the beginning. You never know how things are going to hold up over time, you know, problems you could experience down the road. But for me, generally, if a firearm performs well, 
um, during initial testing, um, I usually don't have a lot of problems down the road. It's usually in the beginning, you know, you'll see whatever problems are lurking because uh, you can kind of detect those the first time you pick it up. So if you're looking for a single stack nine millimeter option, something slim and compact that still has the feel of a larger firearm, um, you know, for that price, it's something that you might want to take a look at. Not bad. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today. Once again, we appreciate you being with us. We'll be back very soon with another video for you. So as always, until then, everybody be safe and have a great day. Thank you.